Okay, here is this famous cabin. Let's investigate. Hello? Is anyone there? Nobody. I can't just waltz in without a warrant. window is too high to see through. That barrel is sturdy enough. I could climb on it. Ugh, an old hunting trophy starting to molt. Empty wine bottles. Somebody has been here lately. It's Daisy's plush toy. If Fluffy is here, the kidnapper has been here. I have to get inside this cabin. splitting wood. Perfect for attacking doors. door to investigate. No need for a warrant. Some people seem to have played here before. The floor is scratched and worn in this area. Hmm, the sofa must have been moved a lot. Damn, it's booby-trapped. If I move, it could go off, and that countdown tells me it wants to go off anyway.
Since I'm telling this story to you, Mr. Poirot, you should be able to deduce I didn't blow myself up. Let's see if I can remember how I diffused the bomb. That should do it. Wow, I wonder if that's how close it was. This would have ended my investigation right here. These rods are heading towards the canisters. It must be the trigger for the explosion. I smell a strong, sweet smell. Damn. I think these are filled to the brim with diethyl ether. Incredibly flammable. It looks like the kidnappers wanted to utterly destroy this place and whoever opened this hatch. A wooden crate? I... I have to open it. Oh no. Daisy. No. I called in my discovery of the body. Then there was nothing I could do except protect the site for forensics. The forensics team arrived an hour later, cordoned off the cabin with crime scene tape, and went to work, looking for physical evidence, fingerprints, testing for fluids, DNA, any clues science can uncover. They removed Daisy's body. The autopsy would take place in the morning. But I had one more stop to make. That night, I swore to find the monster who killed that child. Ratchet on train S saw me? 
Daisy. She was awake? And then she collapsed again. I take the responsibility. She was weaker than I realized. Oh. Lie still while I examine you. Pupils dilated. I'm all right. You are far from all right. You have been heavily sedated. Your pulse is very weak. I... I have to... to finish my story. Ratchet can't escape again. Can't escape. Have no fear of that, mademoiselle. Ratchet will not escape. We must hear her story. This woman needs rest. I will let you know when she is recovered enough to continue. But I warn you, it will be some time. I understand, Doctor. Thank you. I have completed my preliminary examination of the deceased. I think that it will interest you. Indeed it will. And I have other witnesses to interrogate. You are right. Let's not put this poor woman in danger. There will be plenty of time for her to finish her story when she has recovered. By all means. Tell me the results of your examination. Et voilà. Can you estimate the time of death? Rigor mortis was advanced but not complete. I estimate the death occurred between midnight and two in the morning. Hmm, that tallies with the witness statements I've collected so far. Mr. McQueen and Mr. Masterman told me that Monsieur Ratchet didn't smoke. Can you confirm this? I can't say without a more extensive post-mortem. What is the cause of death? Multiple stab wounds to the upper torso. It's odd there are no signs of a struggle that might indicate one of the first wounds was enough to kill him. It seems that Monsieur Ratchet had taken sleeping pills during the night. Ah, that would explain the lack of defensive wounds. What can you tell me about the stab wounds? I counted twelve in all. One or two are so slight as to be practically scratches. On the other hand, at least three would be capable of causing death. The angle of the wounds is instructive. Most appear to have been struck by a right-handed person. But you see this one under the right armpit. It's not a deadly blow given the depth, but a right-hander couldn't have done it. It was most certainly struck with the left hand. So, our murderer is left-handed. No, it is more difficult than that, is it not? As you say, Mr. Poirot, some of these other blows are just as obviously right-handed. Do we have a first and second murderer, as the great Shakespeare would put it? The first murderer stabs his victim and exits left, turning off the light. Then a second murderer comes in the dark, does not see his or her work has been done, and stabs a dead body. Magnificent. You think so? <laughs> I'm glad. It sounds to me a little like nonsense. Thank you, Doctor. Excellent work under difficult circumstances. Please let me know when I may speak again with Mademoiselle Locke. Of course. Those I've questioned could be lying to me. I must be sure of the answer. Even a smoker might innocently turn me down. Yes, that's certainly a good place to start.
I don't remember any conversations about smoking. The top. Yes, I have personally seen some passengers smoking. I just have to remember who they were. I suppose it's likely they will give me the list of who smokes what. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. No, 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 not good. Captain Arbuthnot, I beg your pardon, but could you answer a few questions for me? I'm grateful you found my ticket, Poirot, but now is not convenient. Hmm, I certainly didn't expect such a resistance. I need to be sure before accusing the captain. Most of the passengers pass by the bar during the day. They eat, drink, write. Maybe I can use this information for my investigation. I must admit I'm not right this time. Uh, no, no, it's too unreliable. This is wrong. But I'm never far from the truth. No, 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 it is a flat right. Hmm, yes, it could work. He appears to be an observant young man and serves the passengers regularly. Right. Yes, the 
if I ask them to write something trivial, they may do it instinctively with their dominant hand. I must admit I'm not right, given all his right brilliant. Yes, I will remember which people use their right or left hand. My little grey cells did not let me down. Mademoiselle Debenham, I have a few questions for you. Of course. Let's start with your movements last night. There's little to tell. I went to bed and slept. Did you know the man who was killed? I saw him for the first time during lunch yesterday. Did you notice anything about him? Well, if I believed in auras, I might say he seemed dark. Would you mind writing your address on this paper for me? Not at all. That's it. Mademoiselle Debenham is right-handed. Do you recall what time Mademoiselle Olsen went to get some aspirin from Madame Hubbard? I remember glancing at the clock. She left our room just after 10.30 p.m. Was she away for a long time? About five minutes. That confirms what Madame Hubbard told me. Do you smoke by any chance? No, I never have. Do you own a scarlet nightgown? No, it isn't mine. Whose then? I don't know. What do you mean? You do not say, I have no such thing. You say, it isn't mine. Meaning that you know who it belongs to, am I correct? Oh, I see. No. I woke up this morning about 5 a.m. with the feeling that the train had been standing still for a long time. I opened the door and I saw someone in a scarlet kimono some way down the corridor. Her back was turned. It was impossible to see who it was. I understand. Thank you for your assistance, mademoiselle. Mademoiselle, I am sorry to disturb you, but I need to ask you a few questions. Are you the investigator? I am. We are lucky you are on the train. What do you want to know? I hear, mademoiselle, that you were the last person to see the murdered man alive. I do not know. It may be so. I opened the door of his compartment by mistake. I was much ashamed. It was a most awkward mistake. You actually saw him? Yeah. He was reading a book. And what did you do after that, mademoiselle? I went in to the American lady, Mrs. Hubbard. I asked her for some aspirin, and she gave it to me. I usually carry extra aspirin for the refugees, but I gave mine to a camp in Turkey. They needed it more than me. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Did Mrs. Hubbard ask you whether the communicating door between her compartment and that of Monsieur Ratchet was bolted? Yes. And was it? Yes. And after that, what did you do? After that, I went back to my compartment, took the aspirin and lay down. That was around 10.50 p.m. Is there anyone else in your compartment? Yeah, a young English lady. Very nice, very amiable. After the train left Vinkovsky, did she leave the compartment? No, I am sure she did not. Why are you so sure if you were asleep? I sleep very lightly. I am used to waking at a sound. I am sure that if she had come down from the berth above, I should have awakened. Did you yourself leave the compartment after that? Not until this morning. 
Do you have a scarlet silk kimono, mademoiselle? No, indeed. I have a good comfortable dressing gown of Jaeger material. Do you smoke, mademoiselle? No, I can't stand the smell of tobacco. Perhaps you will be so amiable as to write me down your address. With pleasure. Mademoiselle Olsen is indeed right-handed. This was a very interesting conversation, Mademoiselle. I thank you. If you have any other questions, I'll be in my compartment. Good luck, Mr. Poirot. I'll keep an eye on them instead. I'll observe her instead. Monsieur Fauché. May I disturb you for a moment? Of course. How can I help? It is, of course, about the murder of Monsieur Ratchet. Can you tell me your movements last night? I understand. Yesterday evening, I took a break at Vinkovsky Station with Hotaru. We then went to our quarters in the staff accommodations, a section of the luggage car. Freya was there, reading, and I went to bed right after. Freya is there now, I think, and Hotaru is in the kitchen. They can verify my story. What time was this? 11.30 p.m. or a bit after. The snow is beginning to fall heavily. I see. Thank you. Can you write your address on this paper, please? You want to pay me a visit? <laughs> Who knows, Monsieur Fauché? He is right-handed, there can be no doubt. Are you a smoker? I'm trying to quit, but yes. I'm now down to just one pack of cigarettes a week. If you're looking for a heavy smoker, you should talk to Hutaru. Thank you, Monsieur Fauché. I'll come back to you if I have more questions. So, Poirot, I hope you are progressing in your investigation. I have not finished yet, but it is progressing, yes. I still have many questions that must be answered. I will report to you as soon as I can. Ah, Monsieur Maury. Would you have a few minutes to give me? I have some questions to ask you. Do I look like I can answer questions? The room is spinning. My head is about to explode. <laughs> you were celebrating last night? Celebrating? When Freya always wins. Ah, oh, what am I saying? If you want my answers to your questions to make sense, Help me recover. You see there, the magnet on the fridge. That is my special recipe. I call it my day after survival tonic. If you could make me my special tonic, I might survive long enough to answer your questions. Jean knows the recipe very well. He can help you with the preparation. Very well, Monsieur Maury. If I must, I must. I will make you your day after survival tonic. That's the right answer.
missing half of the tonic ingredients. I have all the ingredients for Monsieur Maurice tonic. I have to go and see Monsieur Fauché so he can prepare it for me. Monsieur Fauché, may I disturb you for a moment? Of course. How can I help? Monsieur Fauché, I need your help to prepare a cocktail. What is this phrase? This is music to my ears. What can I fix for you? A mojito? A gin and tonic? Or perhaps a martini? Shaken? Not stirred? <laughs> it's not for me, but for Monsieur Mori. Ah, his day after survival tonic. Unfortunately, I know it well. Here is everything that was listed on the magnet. Excellent! I can take it from here. Mr. Poirot, I'm uncertain about the lemon juice. Is it half a lemon or full lemon for the recipe? Half a lemon. I can't remember if Hotaru prefers it with ginger or without. Do you remember? I can assure you that he will want the ginger. There you are, sir. Hotaru will be himself again. Excellent. Thank you very much. Here you go, Mr. Mori. I hope this will help you. Thank you very much. Please give me a moment. While this takes effect, it will be a while, I'm afraid. But I will not move from the kitchen. Since I have to wait, do you know where I can find Mademoiselle Nielsen? She is in the staff quarters in the luggage car. If the door is locked, John will have the key. Thank you. I will return. I hope you have a speedy recovery. Hmm, it's low.
Monsieur Mori told me that you are the one who has the key to open the luggage car door. I will need it. Yes, that's right. Here it is. Please don't forget to give it back to me. I will not forget, Monsieur Fauché. I have a favor to ask. Could you visit the passengers who are in their rooms and explain there has been an error with their allergy and diet form? But Monsieur Poirot, I made no errors. <laughs> of course not. Call it a computer error. Yes, it is possible. But even if I can see this is part of your investigation, I do not understand it. I would ask that you observe which hand each passenger uses. Ah, you wish to know if they use the right or left hand when they write. That is my intention. I will take on this mission for you. Excellent. That's it. It's open now. Empty rum bottles. A deck of cards. I suspect they were reading diamonds and spades instead of books. Hello, Mademoiselle Nielsen. May I ask you a few questions? I don't have a minute. My career is ruined, and it's not my fault. But how did this terrible thing come to pass? My supplies, passenger luggage, our living space. There is so little room. I gave the cargo handlers in Istanbul strict instructions how to stack my crates containing the ingredients I need for my desserts. So as one box is used up, it can be discarded. And these fools of cargo handlers did not follow your instructions? Ignored completely. I have four crates that must be moved from there to here to correct the order they are stacked. But placing the wrong crate on top of a smaller crate will crush it, its contents, and my career. Calm yourself, mademoiselle. I understand. So, the problem is these four crates must be moved there, but carefully. Yes. I have to move these four boxes from this location to here. But there is not much space to move the boxes, and I have to be careful never to put a bigger box on top of a smaller one, or the smaller crate will be destroyed. The problem is clear. I shall assist you. Et voilà 
you are a lifesaver. Or at least a dessert saver. Thank you, thank you. I will gladly answer your questions. Can you tell me your movements of last night? Last night after dinner, I stayed in the kitchen until 12.15 a.m. Then I joined Jean and Hotaru in our quarters. Then we... Then all of us read quietly in our beds until we fell asleep. A very studious staff. However, Monsieur Mori doesn't seem to have followed the same literary pursuit as the others. And these rum bottles, do they have something to do with his hangover? <laughs> I rather think that you didn't just read last night. What makes you say that? I spoke to Monsieur Mori. He seemed to be quite hung over. He even asked me to make him his day after tonic. He blurted out, Freya always wins. Wins what? Looking around, it is clear you were gambling and drinking most of the night. You don't understand. It's late when we're off duty, but we need to unwind. And now there's been a murder? Yes, I admit it. We went overboard last night. But please don't tell Mr. Book. It's against regulations. We could all be fired. Mademoiselle, I realize your difficult jobs have been made more difficult. But as you say, there has been a murder. I must have the truth. Of course. I'm so sorry. It's not such a crime. I'll leave it there and check in with Monsieur Fauché. Do you smoke? No, I never have. Thank you. Would you mind writing your address on this paper? I'm asking everyone on the train for addresses, in case I need to contact them once they leave the train in Paris. I understand. Yes, that's it. Mademoiselle Nielsen is right-handed. Thank you for your answers, Miss Nielsen. You're welcome. Here is your key. Thank you very much. My pleasure. About the little favor I asked of you. Aha, but of course. I was able to get new allergy forms from guests who were in their compartments. Monsieur McQueen, Monsieur Masterman, Count and Countess Andrani, they are all right-handed. I also asked Princess Dragomirov, but she had her assistant, Madame Schmidt, sign for her. She is right-handed as well. You have exceeded my expectations. Well done. Thank you, Monsieur Fauché. I'll come back to you if I have more questions. That is not a good answer. I do 
not think that's the right answer. Strange, this story. If Mademoiselle Orson is such a light sleeper, why didn't she tell me about Mademoiselle Debenham getting out of bed? She even made a point to tell me the opposite. Et voilà. Not good. Are you a smoker? Yes, sir. I have a cigarette now and then to relax. Très bien. Think, Poirot. That is not a good answer. Are you a smoker? Yes, I smoke cigarettes. I've tried to quit, but no luck. Yes. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Better. Thank you. Then may I ask you some questions? It will not take long. Quickly, please. I have hungry passengers to feed. Très bien. Can you tell me your movements last night? Oh, nothing special. When I went off duty, I joined Joan and Freya in a compartment. I read for a short while, then went to bed early. Reading? <laughs> I'm not sure you have recovered enough to tell me the truth. Don't waste what little energy you have recovered to lie, Monsieur Mori. Yes. Sorry, Mr. Poirot. You're right. It obviously wasn't reading that made my head hurt like that. But if you told Monsieur Book, it could mean my job. I will keep your secret, but I am investigating a murder. You must tell me the truth. Thank you. You are a heavy smoker. My job. It is very stressful. Would you happen to know who vapes on the train? A banana flavor? Oh, yes. The smell disgusts me. What is wrong with a good tobacco? I do not have time to answer that. Who is it? I've only seen one person who vapes. It's Captain Arbuthnot. Captain Arbuthnot, I see. Please, write your address on this paper. My address? I don't see why. I think I hear Monsieur Book approaching. My address? Yes, of course. Another right-handed person. Not surprising, most people are. Your testimony was invaluable to me. Thank you. Take care, Monsieur Mori. My palate depends on your good health.
Monsieur Fauché, may I disturb you for a moment? Of course. How can I help? So, Monsieur Fauché, are you trying to hide things from me? I know about your little party last night. You are not a detective for nothing. I'm sorry, Monsieur Poirot. Thank you, Monsieur Fauché. I'll come back to you if I have more questions. Captain Arbuthnot, I know that you are the only person on this train to smoke e-cigarettes. We found a vial of e-liquid at the crime scene. Will you talk to me about this, or should I pass on what I've learned to the police? All right. Come in if you must. I have just a few questions for you. Very well. Let's hear them. The young English lady, Mademoiselle Debenham, was at the Tocatlian Hotel. Perhaps you met her there? We exchanged a few words. Fellow Brits abroad, that sort of thing. Hmm. What can you tell me about Mademoiselle Debenham? Nothing whatsoever. We barely spoke. The director of the Orient Express, Monsieur Book, thinks the assassin is a woman. And that is enough to accuse her? She had nothing to do with this murder. How can you be so certain? The idea is absurd. Ratchet was a perfect stranger to her. She'd never seen him before. Ah, did she tell you so? Well, yes, maybe she did. She may have commented once upon his somewhat unpleasant appearance. If a woman is concerned, as you seem to think, to my mind, without any evidence, I can assure you that Miss Debenham could not possibly be implicated. Hmm, it is clear that the captain is defending Miss Debenham, a woman he supposedly doesn't know very well. What were you doing last night around a quarter past one? One fifteen. I believe I was still talking to that young American fellow, Mr. McQueen, the secretary of the man who was killed. We were in his compartment. He was a friend or acquaintance of yours? No, I never saw him before this journey. We'd hit it off at dinner, and the conversation continued into the early hours. Until what time was that? Until one forty-five or so. Then I retired to my room and went to sleep. There is nothing you can recall last night that in any way struck you as suspicious? It's nothing. A mere detail. Allow me to be the judge. Well, before returning to my room, I went to the lounge car to get a glass of water. When I was passing through the first-class corridor, I noticed that the door, which is just after your room, 201, was not quite closed. And the person who was inside peered out in a furtive sort of way. Then he closed the door quickly. I know there's nothing in that, but it was the furtive way it was done that caught my attention. Struck me as a bit odd. I understand. Thank you for letting me know. Could you uh, write down your address here, please? My address? <laughs> if you insist. This man is right-handed. Is this e-cigarette liquid yours? What flavor is it? Banana. Well, that is awkward. That's my flavor of choice. 
But I have no idea what it was doing there. Whatever. Can you explain how it ended up there? I have no idea. I never entered the man's room, Poirot. That's the truth. Thank you, Captain. You're welcome.